Hey guys, today we're going to be unboxing, setting up and installing this all-in-one security camera system in a box. It's a starter kit, it costs about $150 US and it includes a network video recorder and four wireless cameras. So this is my second review of an Andy product, so this name may sound familiar and the branding should look familiar. This box contains four 720p or one megapixel IP66 weatherproof bullet style wireless cameras. There's also a network video recorder and VR included with this kit with a one terabyte hard drive. Kits are available without the hard drive, so I would recommend getting the kit without the hard drive since the included hard drive is pretty low quality and mine failed right away and the NVR couldn't recognize the hard drive. A one terabyte hard drive can store about one month of continuous recording of the four cameras. This is a standalone system and no internet connection is required unless you want remote access. Also no PC is required as the NVR is your interface into the device. You will need to have a TV or a monitor with a VGA or HDMI port, especially when setting this up at first. So let's have a look and see what you get. So first off we have the user manual. The layout and design are perfect, the English is a little broken and the screenshots are a little bit small but they get their point across. Also I found some inconsistencies with what the manual says and actually what you get. And next here we have the NVR itself. On the back we have two Wi-Fi antennas. These are used to connect to the four included cameras and not to the Wi-Fi connection within your home or business. The NVR has its own internal network on a different set of IP addresses where it communicates with the cameras. Here we have the VGA and HDMI ports to attach a monitor, but no cables are included with the kit. A network port for remote access or for adding cameras which may be plugged into your network. We'll get to that shortly. Now the manual says that there are two USB ports, but mine just has one. The port can be used for a mouse or for exporting video to a flash drive. So if you want to have both the mouse and the flash drive connected at the same time, you're going to need a USB hub like this one here, and which can support multiple devices at once. Keep your USB flash drive to 16 gigs, otherwise you're going to get this message here, which indicates that the drive doesn't have enough space to export. And here we have the 12 volt import on the back for power, and you notice that there's no power button, but when it's plugged in, the unit powers up. All right, and next we have a mouse to control the NVR, and we have a very short power cord to power the NVR. So next we have the four power supplies for powering each of the four cameras. The wires on these are quite short and yes even though the cameras are wireless they do require a power line. Now these adapters don't appear to be weatherproof so if you're using them outdoors make sure you use a 12 volt extender cable like this one here. Also it's a good idea to seal it with some electrical tape so that it's completely weatherproof. So lastly we have the four cameras here. They actually feel quite nice, they have a nice weight to them and feel quite durable. Not a bad set of cameras for a starter kit. There is a 12 volt port for power and an RJ45 connection if you have a network connection nearby. The RJ45 port has a rubber plug in it, but it too should be sealed tighter with some electrical tape. Now by the way, powering these cameras with PoE is not an option. On the back here we have an antenna port. This port actually accepts an antenna extension wire in case you need to position the antenna in a better location for reception. I'll add a link to where I got these and everything you've seen here today on my blog and in the description below. On the front of the camera here we have three IR LED lights which help the camera see at night up to 65 feet away. The photo cell here allows the camera to switch between day and nighttime modes depending on the environment lighting. And of course the lens here in the center of the camera has a focal length of 3.6 millimeters. Now lastly, the cameras do come with antennas and they have a range of about 100 meters or 328 feet if you have line of sight. If you don't and you're going through a wall, the range is about 30 meters or 98 feet. We'll do some range testing in another video. So let's get these powered up and test it before doing the physical install. Here we have four channels and I like how they take up the whole screen, no wasted space. So you're going to see a warning that there's no network connectivity. Remember that this is not plugged into the network right now to show that this works as a standalone device. Okay cool, great, all cameras are connected, no configuration required out of the box. The username is admin and the password is blank. So this screen shows that you can connect your mobile device by scanning one of the two app links and then finding the machine by using the cloud ID QR code. But I'm just going to skip that and click next. Select your time zone. Here in the fast network dialog you see the IP address if the NVR were connected to your network. We're going to change that later. Click next. Again I'm reminded that I'm offline. Now we are shown the hard drive page. I'm going to format mine. Now click done. 
So like I mentioned, the included hard drive with this kit failed. Luckily, I had another one on hand, so I was able to swap it out and then reformat the drive. By default, all the cameras are continuously recording, so no setup is required there. Now is a good time to update that admin password from blank. So right click on the Live View page, System Setup, System Admin, and User. And when done, you won't get a confirmation, but you will get a confirmation if something went wrong. So now let's add the NVR to my network and give it an IP address where it can communicate with all other devices and have internet access. The NVR's current IP address is 192.168.1.44. Now to match my network, I'm going to need to change that one to a zero because I'm on a 192.168.0.x network. I also need to update the gateway to be that of my router, which is 192.168.0.1. And when doing this, you get a couple of warnings, but just click OK. So what about if I'm going to be installing a camera close to one of my network drops? Each camera has two ways to connect to the network, wirelessly or through the RJ45 connection on the back of the camera. And each of these will have their own IP address. If the camera is plugged into the network and we navigate to the video manager screen, we'll see this available camera in the first table. The lower table shows all your current connections to the NVR. Notice the IP addresses of the wireless connections. They use their own internal network within the NVR. The NVR then communicates to the network over the NVR's external IP address, which we've already updated. Next, we're going to update the IP address of the RJ45 connection on the camera. Then, in the list below, I'll add it to the connected devices by telling the NVR to find that camera's wired IP address and not to use the wireless IP address. And now for a quick lag test. The camera on the left is transmitting wirelessly to the NVR and the camera on the right is sending data over a hardwired network connection to the recorder. Next we're going to set up remote access. So go to your mobile device and download IP Pro. Next you're going to be faced with a login screen with a plus one. So I'm going to click register since I haven't used this yet. Again, another plus one. I'm not comfortable giving a phone number here, so let's delete that. Okay, it looks like you can enter an email address here. Okay, so I got the code, so I'm guessing I create a password for my account, and this is not the NVR's password. I'll hit on the plus to add the device, add NVR. Now I'm gonna enter my cloud ID, which we saw earlier. And uh, this is the password for the NVR that goes here. So it looks good. It looks like I can scroll through the cameras. Well, not too bad. Now I did run into a few issues where I couldn't connect to the NVR on my own network. The app got stuck and I had to shut it down and restart the app in order to get out. When you bounce over to the cellular network, you also ask if you want to keep playing. I do want to keep playing and the cellular network continues to work as expected. Well, kind of, about half the time. The NVR appeared to be offline sometimes and when it did appear to be online, I couldn't connect to the cameras. It would just show loading and connecting all while the NVR's monitor showed that I was online and on a healthy network. So I did struggle with the app a little bit. I found it a bit clunky and it crashed a few times on me, like when I was updating my password. I'll place the first camera here inside, pointing towards my front door, about 12 feet away. This camera may be permanently installed near here in the future, or just laid here when I'm away, so I can keep an eye on the place. The daytime image seems good. The camera seems to be struggling with backlight though, but I can easily identify myself. At night, the image is a little fuzzy, but this is a 1 megapixel camera. I'll put the next one over here, pointing towards my driveway at about 75 feet away from the fence. Again, daytime looks good, and the license plate is readable at about 25 feet away. Here at night, it's completely dark. No street lights, no moonlight, just darkness. The reflective surface on the license plate makes it illegible, and my face isn't very clear. The next one we're pointing here towards my garage doors. Same experience here. Daytime looks good, nighttime is fuzzy. And I'll put the last one here, looking at my patio door from about 15 feet away. And it could be permanently installed just above it here in the future. It's a nice wide angle and good image during the day, but it's degraded at night. So 
so this morning it's minus 30 degrees Celsius outside or minus 22 Fahrenheit as you can see here with my thermal camera. And I'm happy to report that the camera is performing perfectly. I'm quite impressed that they can stand up to this temperature. And when playing back the footage of all four cameras, I really like how you can fast forward all the channels simultaneously. It isn't too bad, but I would like to be able to drag the timeline so I can scan the footage. And the mobile app behaves in a similar fashion. So overall, I'm impressed with this entry-level security camera system, especially at this price point. I like how we can see the bitrate on the system setup, channel setup, bitrate screen to give you a good estimate of how long it would take to fill your hard drive. I also like how the wireless capability allows you to install these cameras pretty much anywhere, even if it's just in a temporary location while you're gone out of town for a few days. I also like how they stood up to the cold Canadian winter. Now I did struggle at times with the verbiage in the system's user interface, and I found it clunky at times, especially when I was trying to update the IP addresses. The numbers didn't want to be highlighted, and when they finally got highlighted, I had to click it again in order to bring up the number selector. Also, when trying to play back the video, the date selector wouldn't allow me to go back and select today, the 28th. Exporting video was also pretty painful, as it took about nine minutes to export a 525 meg file. The app also needs some work to make it stable and connect consistently. Lastly, I didn't need to do any port forwarding or even look at my public facing IP address, which helped keep things simple. Links to all the products seen here today are on my blog and in the description below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you found this helpful and don't forget to subscribe to be alerted of new content when it's published. Thanks for watching.